an Iowa team that's beaten two ranked opponents in their last three games. Hello, everyone. Larry Morgan along with Doug Altenberger. Brian Cook has entered his senior year as one of the best players in America. And Steve Alford says he's the toughest guy to guard in the Big Ten Conference. And the reason he's the toughest in the Big Ten is he runs the court so well for a big guy, especially in transition. When you shut him down there in the half-court offense, he can post you up and also go behind the three-point line. That's done a great job of reading defenses in the Big Ten. Comes in tonight's game with Illinois with tremendous confidence. Presented to you by Country Insurance and Financial Services. Real people, real answers, real quick. The Iowa Hawkeyes have won four of their last five by doing what Steve Alford likes to call valuing possessions of the basketball. Yeah, in the Big Ten, if you take care of the basketball, play good, solid defense, you always get a chance to win in this league. There you see the turnover in the last four games. Those are three of those games against ranked opponents. So Iowa doing a great job of taking care of the basketball so far. They certainly did that against Michigan State when they knocked off the 20th ranked Spartans, 68-64. And there they did a great job of handling the basketball, like we said, but also forcing turnovers and manufacturing points. Did a great job of getting to the free throw line, and Worley did a, stepped up with a huge night for Iowa. And, of course, Glenn Worley enters his junior year, maybe starting to develop the consistency that people expected of him. And they need his leadership. Steve Alford talked about Iowa looking for those seniors to step up. Well, Worley couldn't have been much better on Saturday against Michigan State. In fact, he had a career high. They came up with 29 points, including four threes. Just did an outstanding job. But tonight, a big test against the big guys inside for the Abiding Illini. It's Iowa and Illinois next. Dodge, grab life by the horns. By Wellmark Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Iowa, an independent licensee of the Blue Cross and Blue Shield Association. You just can't beat the Blues. By U.S. Cellular, we connect with you. By Prairie Farms Ice Cream, taste the homemade goodness of Prairie Farms. And by Option, grass control to put you in control. Welcome back to Carver Hawkeye Arena. Always a great rivalry, Illinois and Iowa. Let's take a look now at the option keys to the game. Yeah, Illinois so far in the Big Ten did a great job of pounding the ball inside, especially to Brian Cook. Iowa, I think, can really take advantage of second-hand chance points, trying to manufacture points, and then on the other hand, avoid foul trouble. Reiner and Bruner need to stay on the floor for Iowa. And what the Hawkeyes are wondering, can they do what nobody else has been able to do, and that's contain Brian Cook. This guy's been the model of consistency, especially when you figure that he has scored no less than 17 points in any game thus far, leading the Illini to their glossy 12-1 record. He's tops in the league in scoring. It should be a good one tonight. Iowa and Illinois. Welcome back to Iowa City. Two teams who are undefeated in Big Ten play. Here are the starting lineups brought to you by Prairie Farms Ice Cream. Taste the homemade goodness of Prairie Farms. Doug, lots of youth. Illinois starting three freshmen. The Hawkeyes starting two. Yeah, and uh, you know that's probably what's going to tell the tale tonight is who young guys are going to show up. Both freshmen uh, stepped up, played big minutes for both teams. And Hightower, Mike Sanzier, and Dan Christman are the officials. Reiner and Augustine stand in the center circle. Augustine 6'10", Reiner 6'11". And Ed Hightower wants to make sure that Glenn Worley is properly positioned along the circle. And the game is underway with the Illini controlling the tap and their outstanding freshman point guard, Darren Williams. And he's paired off with the other outstanding freshman point, Jeff Horner. Both have done a great job so far. Yeah, both of them take care of the basketball. They don't play like freshmen. Williams is open. And the rebound is run down by Bruner. Playing with a shiner on his right eye. Collided with the camera at the end of the court late in the Michigan State game on Saturday. Reiner up high against Augustine. Illinois is playing some great defense this year, especially, according to Bill Self, on first shot defense. Horner gets inside the score. And Larry, that's what you can do when you try to play out in the passing lanes, extend your defense, put it on the floor. No help defense for Illinois. The Illini averaging 79 points a game. Their average margin this year, 20 points. Outscoring opponents 79 to an average of 59. Forced out of bounds is Brian Cook. And an Iowa defense, they get the ball on an Illini turnover. Yeah, nice job by Reiner to stay vertical there, not reach. 
What a record Bill Self has. Two years, two Big Ten championships. He tries for the three-peat this year. Worley with a quick pass to Bruner, kicks it right back to Worley. Gets Cook into the air and knocks it down, and he may be picking up where he left off on Saturday. Great ball fake by him, under control. You can see Iowa very comfortable in their offensive set. Illinois defensively trying to get in the passing lanes and haven't done a very good job so far. The penetration by Harrington. Now D. Brown, the outstanding freshman, finds another freshman in Augustine. Here's Cook. Missing right, Augustine offensive rebound, wants to go up in a crowd and scores. Bill South says that's something the Illini have got to do better. They did it well that time. Well, and that's what happens. Cook goes out in the perimeter. No one blocks out Augustine. Got to know where he is. He looks to crash the offensive board, leads the team in that category. Worley again getting Cook into the air. This time it's an air ball. The rebound is taken by Harrington. The Illini try to tie it, and they do. Augustine, who was so big in the first half against Wisconsin on Saturday with Cook and foul trouble, and he starts big tonight. The Iowa turnover gives it back to the fighting Illini. Augustine really beginning to step up and assert himself as his confidence grows. And you can do that when you've got a senior like Brian Cook who takes the pressure off. He allows Augustine to run inside without too much people double teaming him, and he's really taken advantage of it. Had a big game against Wisconsin. You can see playing with a lot of confidence so far. With the rookies on both sides, both coaches have really stressed the first 10 minutes of this game was important. Cooks hit 10 threes this year, so he can shoot from out there. And Chauncey Leslie gets his hands on the basketball and runs it down to the Hawkeyes. But fires a two car for Jeff Porter, and the ball goes back to the Illini. See, Larry, they've got to be real concerned. They don't want to get too much in the transition game. Don't want to run up and down the court with Illinois. They want to take their time, make it more of a low-scoring affair. He sort of looks up. He was open, but Horner wasn't able to catch up with it. So Darren Williams, who has a terrific assist turnover ratio, 59 assists, 22 turnovers, simply outstanding for a freshman point guard. He brought it up for Illinois. Cook gets bumped. And the game's first foul is spotted. As we take a look at this great rivalry between the border states, 132nd meeting in this series. The Illini won the only meeting last year in Champaign, and this will be the only regular season matchup between the two teams this year. Reiner on the foul for Iowa, the game's first foul. Yeah, I always thought when uh, I was playing in the Big Ten that uh, this arena was probably the toughest to play here in Purdue. It seemed like Illinois really didn't have much success in either arena. And with these border rivals, the fans <laughs> really get into it, don't they, Doug? They sure do. Cook on the turnaround off the glass, and Horner high for the Iowa rebound. Horner checked by Harrington. Leslie working against Dee Brown, and so far the Hawkeyes have not been able to get him some touches. Sondelider, an early entry for Iowa, tries to cut through the double team, and will go to the line as the result. With well, the I, foul for the Illini. Larry, I, I, Augustine. Iowa doing a nice job down on the other end and clearing out rebounds. And you can see inside, go, ball goes inside. Augustine doesn't move his feet. He reaches, gets called for the foul. But Iowa, on the other hand, really doing a good job on the glass, really clearing it out, giving Illinois only one shot. Sondelider, an early replacement for Jared Reiner. Comes in averaging seven points a ball game. He's really stepped up his game. Luther Head back in or comes into the Illini lineup for the first time. Has been bothered by a strained abdominal muscle and a groin pull, but feeling much better now, and they think he's got his quickness back. Yeah, both him and Powell have been injured so far in the last four or five games, and uh, Bill Self talked about getting those guys healthy. He thinks they're just about ready to come back. He feels real confident with them. He thinks the offensive rebounding will improve as those two are helping. Cook having some trouble, and then Leslie runs out of room. Steve Alford wanted to travel on Cook prior to the takeaway. Sondelider instead picking up the foul, and that will be his first, and each of Iowa's big men with an early foul. And again, as you say, with the seven-man rotation, Iowa can't afford fouls. Cook muscles in against Sondelider. Brown trying to shake Leslie. Open his head. And the rebound by Horner. Though a guard, Horner, a pretty good rebounder, averaging nearly five a game. Leslie for the first shot of the game. And the Hawkeyes are passing it around, Doug. Three different Iowa players have scored. Baskets and four different players have scored.
Williams travels. The Illini guilty of a turnover, and the ball goes back to the Hawkeyes. Well, give credit to Iowa's defense. Illinois looking uh, too rushed on offense, trying to force it. Some shots didn't go early. Now they're going to the perimeter, showing that they're a young team. When you go on the road, you got to stay patient. Entering tonight's play, four teams in the conference are 2-0. and Everybody else already has a loss, but of course, one of these teams will fall from the ranks of the unbeaten tonight. Sondelider with a good move, but he can't finish in Augustine. High to pull down the rebound for the Illini. He's the number two Illinois rebounder with six a game. Brown open, but the foul occurred first. Glenn Worley called for the push, and Iowa with three early fouls with the ball game barely four and a half minutes old. So the Iowa Hawkeyes have opened the early scoring, getting baskets from three different players, the most recent from Chauncey Leslie. Four, here's a stats flash brought to you courtesy of Balance Pro Corn Herbicide. And Doug, the early shooting numbers look like this. Well, they've really struggled so far, Illinois. They've had one shot now, and that's what the key for, you know, Iowa. That's what they did against Michigan State, and that's what, you know, they're confident of playing great defense, two for seven, and Cook, uh, no rebounds, 0, 0 for three. We talked about him in the open. Iowa, on their hand, really taking care of the basketball uh, fairly well, but uh, still shooting great from the field. This stat flash brought to you by Balance Pro, the power of recharge. Iowa three early fouls. The Illini have been called for one. And again, with Iowa's short and bench, and just a seven-man rotation, that's something that Steve Alford will be keeping a very close eye on. The travel is called on Luther Head, and the Illini turn it over yet again early, and the Hawkeyes have the ball. Boy, Larry, right now, Leslie is just, uh, he's got the, the, the notebook out on D. Brown. D. Brown's a freshman. He's really struggling. And there was an example where he overplayed and caused that traveling. And so Horner, guarded by Luther Head, comes into the offensive end. Jeff Horner has been brilliant in his last four ball games. 25 assists and four turnovers, one per game in the last four. Leslie trying to get clear of Brown. Now Horner pulls up. Augustine and Sondelander battle for the rebound. Leslie comes up with it. Chauncey Leslie, number four in the Big Ten in scoring at 16 and a half a game, gives Iowa an early lead of six. Augustine working inside. Now here's Head with the penetration. And the Illini have turned it over three straight trips down the floor. And Bill Self can't be pleased with that. Well, the difference between last year and this year's team is a prime example here. You see guys competing, scrapping everything about it. They pick up the loose ball. We talk about those second chance points, and Leslie converts. Well, people around the league surprised about Iowa. They say, how are they doing it? It's sheer hustle at this point. Well, you know, we talk about uh, cliche intangibles. There you see the turnover story. But uh, intangibles, uh, chemistry, those are things you can't measure. Everybody looks at talent, but you got to have those if you want to be a, a winner, a successful team. Brody Boyd into the Iowa lineup to play a guard spot. So Iowa, in essence, down with three guards, Horner, Leslie, and Boyd, and the two big guys, Sondelina and Reiner, are in. The steal by Brown. Leslie challenges. Leslie picks up the foul, but didn't want to give up the easy basket. And Chauncey Leslie with his first foul. Well, you're going to see D. Brown, one of the quickest guys in college basketball. Leslie does a great job of anticipation, just grabs the hand at the end there. Looked like he got all ball at the beginning, but then as he followed through, that's when he got the hand. But D. Brown is really quick, and Leslie just came up out of nowhere. And he's got some quickness, too. Only a handful of guys in the Big Ten that could have caught him, probably. <laughs> I don't think there's anybody except that guy right there could have caught him. D. Brown, outstanding freshman year, second on the Illini in scoring at 13 a game, and he knocks down the free throw. Yeah, and he's a lot like for Iowa. Horner is for Iowa. He's, he plays a lot of minutes for a freshman, up there around 30 minutes a game, and just is a very solid player. Doesn't make a lot of mistakes. Reiner with the Iowa rebound. Boyd, who has had the hot hand of late, came up with four big steals against Michigan State, all in crucial situations on Saturday. Roger Powell is coming to the lineup for the Illini. The back door to Horner, and the foul will be called on Powell, who got there late and tried to challenge him. Well, Iowa looks very comfortable offensively, getting in their sets, very patient, and looking for things. You know, good job of reading the defense, good slash to the bucket. That's what the ball goes in the post. 
And let guys on the perimeter try to slash that back uh, basket. And Horner does gets there. And the thing about Horner is, like you talked about, the turnovers, the lack of. I mean, uh, he's had 14 assists in the first two Big Ten games, and he has uh, really played extremely well. In fact, we have two outstanding freshman point guards playing tonight between Williams and Horner. Williams number one in the league in assist turnover ratio and Horner number three in their freshman. Yeah, and uh, I talked to Steve Alford uh, this afternoon and talked about these freshmen. When, when we came to play, we were pretty nervous. These guys have so much more experience and much more confident. Horner one out of two at the line, 11 to five. I were with the early late as the Illini. Bring the ball down the court. Illinois, couple of six-point victories to begin Big Ten play at Minnesota, 76-70. Saturday over Wisconsin, 69-63. Leslie with the rebound, Brown's back to try to defend him. Leslie takes it around him and hangs on the rim and no basket. Horner thought he tapped it in, but Dan Christman says no, it's basket interference, and no bucket. Well, it looked like it was going to go down, didn't need to be tipped. What a great move by Leslie. Hesitation goes right around D. Brown, and it looks like that English was going to get it. In the last second, Horner just touches it. Looks like maybe even an Illinois player got a hand on it there, but what a great move. Great hesitation. D. Brown tries to fake him out. He fakes him out. And it's fun to watch those two go at it right now. It's quick on quick. It certainly is. Landon Ferguson has come on to the Illini lineup. Of Oakland, California, averaging three a game. The takeaway by Horner. Turnovers continuing to plague the finding Illini early. Horner in deep. Williams goes for the tie. I would play both their big guys, Sonda Liner and Ryer, together right now with three guards. Horner forces a shot, and Nick Smith, who just came into the lineup there to pull down the rebound. Horner and Cook got tied once and twice. It was all accidental, but the crowd hoots and hollers that in the defensive end, while Smith misses at the offensive end. Signed the lighter, facing up against Cook. And Cook makes some contact. Ryan Cook on the Illini foul. And Cook's looking to get a little frustrated out there. Hasn't gone well for him offensively. Down here, it gets a little chippy. Horner and him are uh, pushing each other around. And uh, Christman was all over the, the referee. And uh, no harm, no foul. Well, all incidental and accidental <laughs> contact. And I don't think anybody meant anything by it. Sean Sondelier to the line. A 63% free throw shooter who is three out of three tonight. And he's done a nice job defensively coming in here. He's able to, to uh, give Worley and Reiner some minutes, give them a rest. The thing about him is to see how many minutes he could play. He's a guy that, he's a 20 minute guy. He's have great stamina. You look at the shiner on Greg Bruner's eye we were talking about earlier as he has come into the lineup, replacing Jeff Horner. Side the ladder, four of four from the line, and the Hawkeyes have opened a eight point lead of 13 to five. John Sondelider, the ground of applause as he leaves the lineup. And Glenn Worley comes back in. Both coaches going to their benches a lot early, Doug, but Bill Self has a lot more to choose from on his bench. Yeah, he likes to go eight, can go ten deep. Brown trying to find Augustine, and it's out of bounds off Iowa. Well, I mean, Iowa's just playing some great defense here. You're looking at an Illinois team that leads the Big Ten in assists, and they're just doing one pass. They're getting frustrated out there, not really moving the basketball like they usually do around the perimeter and making some very difficult paths in the entry. There's something they worked on today. Yep, we watched it a lot. Yeah, we watched that a lot. Ken and Cook. Cook up for two points, and Cook with a chance at a three-point play. And that's a difficult pass to make from the perimeter. Gets caught on the up screen. Does a good job by D. Brown, even though he's 5'11". Sets a good screen against Bruner, and Bruner gets caught high. Well, Brian Cook, number one in the league in scoring, number four in rebounds. He's also one of the league's best free throw shooters. Right now, number three in the conference, 84%. Last year, 92% in Big Ten play. What a great touch for a big guy. His three-point play pulls the Illini within five with 12-14 left in the first half. Bruner and a crowd got fouled. Augustine with his second foul for Illinois. 
14 fouls against Illinois and five early against Iowa. Now Augustine is out and Nick Smith comes back for Illinois. Really tough matchup so far for Brian Cook. Boyd out of the corner. And Worley collides with Cook. Worley gets the foul. And that will be his second foul. And of course, fouls have been a problem in the career of Glenn Worley. So Worley with his second foul. The Hawkeyes with their sixth. And we're seeing a lot of great action thus far as the alley-oop to Cook. And that resulted in a three-point play. The Illini and the Hawkeyes in a tight Welcome back to Iowa City with the Hawkeyes leading the Illini 13-8. Lots of other basketball around the country. Let's take a look. Let's start with uh, the top and look at number one Duke as they came up with a victory over Virginia tonight. The seventh-ranked Gators also prevailing. And a Big Ten score there. Indiana in the final knocks off Northwestern, so the Hoosiers improved their Big Ten mark to 2-1. and one. That'll rank teams down south between Mississippi State and Alabama. And Creighton with a big lead over Evansville. They have an outstanding player in Kyle Corber. I saw one magazine said he might be the player of the year right now. The pull-up from outside, and the three is knocked down by Dee Brown. His 29th three of the year, and it's a two-point game. Nice set play by Bill Self that timeout. Leslie Bruner, Worley, Boyd, and Ryder on the floor for the Hawkeyes. Brown all over. Leslie, and he's forced to use a timeout. The Illini seem to come out of that timeout a little more committed at the defensive end. <laughs> well, I'm sure Bill Self gave him a little motivational speech, but there you see Steve Alford not real happy with the last shot they took. Came down offensively. We look a little hesitant. Right now, Illinois stepping up their pressure defensively. Iowa's got to respond. Maybe look back door, slash the basket, look to put it on the floor. You know, you mentioned earlier the Illini lead the Big Ten in assists. They're also number four in the country in that statistic, and they've got a couple of freshmen running the guard spots. That's really outstanding. Take a look at Bill Self and, and what a great career he's building for himself. Yeah, in, in, the, in the last, let's see, the last four years at Tulsa and Illinois, he's come away with a conference championship. So this guy knows how to win. I mean, he's done a great job. This was supposed to be a rebuilding year for him. And all of a sudden, bam, he's ranked eighth in the country, even with a young team. And uh, he's, he's done a nice job of handling these young guys. At times their confidence is something that can go really quickly. He's encouraging them, whereas last year he's a little tougher on the veterans. Learn from some of the legends in the game. Worked under Larry Brown at Kansas and Eddie Sutton at Oklahoma State. Well, you learn a lot from some of the legends like those guys. We are at Carver Hawkeye Arena where the eighth went Illini are trying to win their 10th consecutive Big Ten game. The drive by D. Brown. I'm Larry Morgan along with Doug Altenberger. Glad you're with us tonight. That kind of action is what we're seeing. The pace of this game beginning to pick up. The Hawkeyes have been outscored six straight points by the Illini. Illinois has really stepped up that defense. They've got some very impressive defensive numbers this year. Ryder on the miss, battle underneath. And the foul called on Illinois. Luther hit with his first foul. Good job by Worley. Does a nice job of clearing out, getting position, going against Cook there. Head has no option but to foul. Fortunately for Illinois, wasn't on kick Cook to get his second one. We, talk, we talked about Iowa get manufacturing those points, and there's a prime example of getting to that offensive glass. Horner in for Leslie and Harrington in for Ferguson. We take a look at the shooting. It has been a defensive struggle, but that's no surprise. The Illini tops in the conference, allowing just 59 points a game. Best in field goal defense at 37%. Hurley and a crowd over Cook. And it's a 15-11 Hawkeye lead as Illinois comes down with a little over 10 left to play. In the first half, the Illini have won their last nine Big Ten games dating back to last year. Cook inside of Reiner, stays after it and gets it on the second effort. One of the few times where Brian Cook was wide open in the paint. Keep an eye on Cook trying to guard Worley. So far, that has not been a very good 
situation for that line as Worley has scored his third basket. Yeah, Worley is just really, I mean, he's had, uh, had, Cook's having a hard time staying up with Worley's quickness. Really doing a good job moving without the basketball. Brown, Harrington, Smith, Cook, and Head on the floor for the Illini. Cook on the miss, Ryder with his second Iowa rebound. Porter starts one way, comes back the other. Ryder recovers but travels, and the Illini get it on the Iowa turnover. Kyle Wilson into the lineup for Illinois, the freshman out of Plano, Texas. The Iowa Hawkeyes trying to knock off the eighth-ranked team in the country. Yeah, there he's been you, hot. You talked about Worley, and there is a tough shot right over Brian Cook. He does another job working him over here, goes straight up, has to put an extra arch on it, and uh, he's just wearing out Cook right now. Cook came in with all the credentials, but Worley, like you said, had a big game against Michigan State and offensively coming with a lot of confidence. And both teams look really tired right now out there. They're, they're you know, on their jerseys and uh, some substitutions that both coaches make. Get some new guys, fresh bodies in there. Bill Self has already played 10 players. Steve Alford has played seven. We're only 11 minutes into this one. Wilson with the miss, the rebound run down by Leslie. Leslie coast to coast, and he's bumped on the way in. Well, we talked about a tough shot on the other end leads to a transition basket. Leslie, being the senior that he is, recognizes that it's the numbers. D. Brown's first foul, both teams with 16 fouls. Corner to trigger for Iowa. Bruner is somehow left open by the Illini defense. Can't convert, and Wilson's got the Illini rebound. Neither team hitting their threes tonight. And of course, Sean Harrington, I don't think, has one yet, Doug. But Luther Head does. And he's hit almost 40% of his threes, and he makes it a one point game. Game tied once, that at four. The Illini have not led yet. Bruner in deep to score. And Iowa stretches the lead back to three. Hawkeyes an early eight point lead. Again, the Illini have not had the lead. It's for Illinois, just their third road game. And Illinois with a real small lineup here. You've got Powell, Powell and Wilson playing the power forward and center position. Wilson tries to get around Sondelider, and the foul called on Sondelider, and that will be his second. So two of Iowa's starters with two fouls, with still eight minutes to play in the first half. You see good ball fake by Wilson, goes up strong, being able to draw the foul. Both teams have got to recognize the officiating. You're not going to be able to put your hands on people, and as a player, you recognize that. You've got to make those adjustments. Illinois, on their hand, you know, like you said, they've played 10 guys already. I always got to be more concerned, look for maybe them to come out in the zone, maybe change their defenses a little bit. Kyle Wilson hasn't been to the line many times this year, just six times. He's hit five of them, and he converts. And it's a two point game once again. I mentioned the Illini have been on the road only twice. They lost at Memphis, and of course, they won at Minnesota. They're only lost this year at Memphis. Sondelider with the offensive weather with the defensive rebound. Boyd guarded by Harrington. Bruner calling for it against Powell. Williams trying to help out. Leslie comes up with it. And oh! Chauncey Leslie, an impressive move for the Hawkeyes, who lead Illinois by four. Nick gets the crowd into this one. Head in deep. Powell on the follow. And Horner comes out with it for Iowa. And the crowd is into this one, and Bill Self needs to talk to his basketball team and try to stop this Iowa momentum. Well, he, he had a very strange lineup in there, but he had to go small, had to give some of the guys rest. Some of the guys are in foul trouble, but they really weren't able to manufacture many points. On the other hand, Iowa went into transition. Horner does a great job of keeping his dribble, 
and everybody run in the lanes. That's what you tell your big guys. Keep your head up. And Horner, I mean, he's a guy, he's a freshman, but he plays like a senior. Here's a great move by Leslie. Puts on the burners, knife through three or four orange and blue jerseys. And Leslie, probably, I thought D. Brown was the quickest guy in the country. This guy, I think, is actually quicker. Yeah, and then Northwestern's got a freshman point guard, and he's awfully impressive as well. Bench scoring will be an interesting factor tonight because Iowa gets 80% of their points from their starters. So Illinois, you got to figure, should have the upper hand in that category. And that's what Illinois is going to try to do. Try to wear down Iowa, go at those seven guys. They're going to go 9-10 deep and try to, you know, take advantage of more in the second half. Harrington Williams, Cook, head on the floor for the Illini along with Augustine. The Illini have hit just one of their last six shots and over the last three. But Harrington's a guy who can change that in a hurry, not this time. And the ball out of bounds off Illinois. And with the stoppage of play, we have a timeout. Steve Alford likes to hustle of his basketball team thus far. They've opened a six-point lead over the fighting Illini. And he's still hot tonight. Well, Larry, you mentioned that Brian Cook really having a hard time staying with this guy. Came out of the blocks, hit that jumper. And when you do that, your confidence soars, takes it on the floor, recognizes the defense, goes over Cook again. And he's taking the, two, the All American right now. He looks like the All American. It looks like so far, Bill Self is really committed to be keeping that matchup as it is because several times Cook has remained on him. Well, Cook's worried about getting in foul trouble. That's one of the things that hel has helped Illinois so far in the season that he hasn't. But uh, Worley recognizes that and is attacking him. He needs to be more aggressive defensively. Cook does. He needs to step up defensively. Hawkeyes have again the three guard lineup of Boyd, Horner, and Leslie, along with Bruner and Reiner. Horner being guarded by Williams. Battle of freshman point guards. Both have had outstanding years today. Boyd getting hit into the air. Ball blocked. Reiner has it blocked. The Illini have hit all along. One of the few easy baskets Illinois has. Great block on the other end. Fans here wanted a foul, but he was rejected and thrown out the half court. Luther Head was a recipient of it. Luther Head given Illinois a nice spark off the bench, a couple of baskets, and some good defense as well. Well, Larry, you talked about him being healthier. He looks much better out there, much quicker. He's healthier. Towns had a bad toe. Bill Self says he's healthier. In fact, maybe health wise, as good as the Illini have been for a while. The Browns had the bad hand, and Self says he's coming along well. Illinois guilty of the foul as Horner takes it into the corner and now we'll go to the line. The ball goes inside. Hey, good job by Augustine staying vertical. Doesn't lower his hand and then you see head breaks out early. Guards have got to get back. Horner a little disgusted with himself. Got to check back. Oh, that's the main responsibility of your guards. Your two guards got to communicate. We're late back into the Iowa lineup as Horner goes to the line following the foul on Harrington and knocks it down. And he's got five points in the game. And the Hawkeyes have a five point lead. Jeff Horner, 59 assists, 26 turnovers, third best assist turnover ratio in the league. He has six points, and Iowa extends their lead to six points at 25 to 19. Hawkeye's biggest lead has been eight, game tied once. The Illini have not yet led. Head in deep, and he continues to play well for the Fighting Illini. He has been the big offensive spark for Illinois and has led them in scoring so far. Big shot in the arm coming off the bench. He's got his legs back. Again, he was injured early in the season, wasn't 100%. Worley trying to get inside Augustine. Augustine goes over and fouls it. And for James Augustine, that will be his third foul. So we talked about playing the zone, got to communicate. Everybody's worried about the perimeter. Augustine gets his third. Can Worley give him credit? Very active, steps up in the passing lane. That's what your big guys want to do. Look for those gaps. Augustine, a little disgusted with himself, gets that third foul. Well, Augustine got off to a great start, got the first two Illini <laughs> baskets coming off the career high 17 against the Badgers, but then the foul problems, and that he'll set the rest of the half. And 
with a hot hand being chased by Horner. Harrington guards by Boyd. Harrington 6-3 and Boyd is 5-11. And deep goes head to score, but a foul is called first. Now Illinois starting to get a little bit better ball, move, ball movement, Larry. I mean, the ball goes inside. They're trying to reverse it. Offensively, look like they've settled down here. Looked a little nervous the first five or six minutes, especially with the young guys in the backcourt. Horner with his first foul. Good look at Jeff Horner out of Mason City, Iowa. Mr. Basketball in the state of Iowa last year. Played for his dad, Bob, who's had one other successful point guard, a guy by the name of Dean Oliver. Now you talk about, uh, you know, if you want to know if a coach is happy with you, you look at the average minutes you're playing per game. And this guy's averaging 35 minutes, so Steve Alford likes what he's got. And this guy, as a point guard, makes everybody look better out there, and that's the key. And this Illinois sophomore, Luther Head, has come off the bench for nine points for the Fighting Illini. And it's a two-point game. Picked up by Williams. Inside once again, Cook is guarding Worley. That's a good matchup to keep an eye on off the ball. Iowa tries to get it to Worley, but it's poked away and picked up by Nick Smith. The Illini could take their first lead with the three. This time, Cook gets inside Ryder, and then pinned and scored an easy two. And Brian Cook has got seven, and it's a tie ball game. Horner challenging the big guy, getting an offensive rebound. Wesley for three. And Brian Cook beginning to assert himself now for the Illini as Illinois tries to take their first lead. Harrington 0 for 2 early. Horner on the rebound. His fourth rebound. does a nice job of reading the defense, knifing between Illinois players, slashing to the bucket. You know, he's the type of guy that you want to force him out on the perimeter, look for the drive first, then look for the jump shot. And he has got such explosive uh, quickness. Steve Alford talked about his leadership, him stepping up his game, and uh, especially here in Big Ten play. Kurt Spurgeon comes on for the Iowa Hawkeyes, a junior out of DeWitt, Iowa. Started his career with Steve Alford at SMS, then went to Tyler, Texas when Alford came to Iowa. Now he's a walk-on with his Iowa basketball team. Leslie with his seventh point. He leads a balanced Iowa scoring attack. Horner with six, Sondelider with six, and Worley with six. A great balance in the Iowa lineup. And, and that's what they have. That's one of their strengths for Iowa is that everybody moves out. Good balance scoring. The Chauncey Leslie knocks down both free throws, and the Iowa Hawkeyes have a two-point lead over the eighth-ranked team in the country, the Fighting Illini, 27-25 Iowa. 27 and Illinois 25. Some football news made around the University of Iowa campus today. Dallas Clark in the blue shirt, the winner of the Mackey Award as the nation's top tight end, announced that he will forego his final year of eligibility to enter the NFL draft. That was the bad news for Iowa fans. The good news, Kirk Ferentz has now announced that he is staying. He had talked with the Jacksonville team of the NFL, but has decided to stay. But it's for Dallas Clark. It would have been his sixth year here. he will be 24 years <laughs> of age, and he decided it was time to get on with the uh, NFL portion of his life. Well, the Big Ten just did a great job in the bowl season. They beat up on everybody, and Ohio State comes with a national championship. Absolutely. Brandon Ferguson in the lineup for Illinois. He's handling the basketball there, and off the ball, a violation is spotted. And a foul is called on Sean Sondelander. Let's take a look at what's ahead for the Illini. First of all, it's a tough two-game trip at Iowa tonight at Indiana on Saturday, and then Purdue, and then another road game at Penn State. Yeah, there's nothing better and nothing worse than playing going to Iowa and then turn around going to Indiana in a short period of time. Those are two tough places to win. Sondelider's just picked up his third foul as you look at Bill Soft. Ryan Cook to the line, a total in the ballgame of seven points. Again, a terrific free throw shooter at 84%. Looking ahead for the Iowa Hawkeyes, they get a week off after tonight and don't play again until a game a week from tonight at 
Kohl Center at Madison, and that game will be on ESPN+. Plus. Cook knocks down both free throws. The ball game is tied up for the third time. Illinois coming out right now in the 2-3 zone. They're changing their defenses on Iowa right now. They played a lot of zone this year? No, not really. They like to play man-to-man, -man, but uh, we'll change it up. If they have success, they'll stay with the zone. Cook runs down the rebound after the miss by Leslie. The Illini looking for their first lead of the night. Not though, maybe this time as they get it back. And deep goes Cook. And it's a charge on Brian Cook, his second foul. Ryder takes the charge. Well, Cooks thought he had the numbers. Great job by Reiner to come over, take that charge, and there was no acting there. He took the full blow, took it hard. Talk about scrappy sacrificing your body. He does a great job here. Boom, he goes down, and Cook lands right on top of him. Fortunately, nobody gets hurt. With Cook airborne at 210 and or 610 and 240, you got to have some intestinal fortitude <laughs> to take that charge, don't you? That's right. Or you got to have a big heart. He's got that. Absolutely. Illini staying with the zone. Trying to bounce it inside. Brody Boyd can't find Jared Reiner. And the Iowa turnover once again will give the Illini a chance to take their first lead. And Boyd needs to get open. He needs to be a little more active on the perimeter, go along the baseline. They've got to look for him. Illinois doing a good job communicating, knowing where he is. He's the zone buster for Iowa. Williams, Brown, Wilson. Ferguson and Smith on the floor for the Illini right now. So not too many starters out there. Obviously the guards are the starters, but new guys inside. Brown trying to break down Leslie. Shot clock is at 10. It's for the Illini first lead. Not this time. And going high to pull down the rebound, Greg Bruder. And that is his second rebound of the ball game. One of the top rebounders in the Big Ten and one of the best freshman rebounders in the Big Ten. It's about four chances that Doug, the Illini have had to take their first lead and couldn't get the job done. Out of the corner, it's four. And it's a three-point lead for Iowa, 30-27. to That the Hawkeyes, first three of the ballgame. playing some outstanding defense tonight. The Illini really having to labor for their shots. Wilson off the baseline with a miss. Horner knocked to the deck and a foul is called and I believe they got Landon Ferguson. Well, we talked about the 2-3 zone and you got to look for Boyd when he's open. He steps up, no one's there. Great release along the baseline. And what causes this is the penetration by Horner. Goes inside. Help is there, but no, not the recovery. He knocks down the three. When they're playing the zone, you got to know where your guys are. And good job by Horner on the other end, competing, getting that off uh, that defensive rebound, and getting to the free throw line. Horner tonight, three out of four from the line. It was Ferguson on the foul, his first. And line nine over the double bonus now, a ten foul. So I will end with the double bonus. Luther Head comes in. Ferguson will leave. Order season high, 15, a couple of times this year against Florida Atlantic in his debut and also at Tulsa as Iowa knocked off a rated team. Now they've knocked off two rated teams in their last three outings. Iowa builds the lead to five. Steve Brown with just one basket thus far. He's having a tough time getting on track. On the baseline, it's Wilson in the crowd. And Wilson gets bumped and fouled. Coming up at halftime of this game between Iowa and Illinois, we will be taking a look at inside the Big Ten. Also have halftime highlights and, of course, first half stats, which should be most interesting. What's been an interesting first half? Well, it's been a defensive struggle on both ends. Both teams have really stepped it up. Both teams are excellent defensive-oriented teams. and. Uh, each team has really have a hard time manufacturing or getting some points with some production. 
everything that uh, goes up has been contested. Illinois tops in the league in field goal defense at 37 percent. The Hawkeyes a couple of notches behind him at 39. So you had to figure coming in that baskets would be hard to come by. Yeah, and both teams doing a great job of behind the three-point line. Not a lot of clear uh, clear threes to shoot. Both teams are really you know having a hard time getting the passing the ball, reversing it on the perimeter. Speaking of threes, there's Horner with one. A 10-point first half for Jeff Horner and a six-point lead for Iowa. About a six-second differential between the shot clock and the first half clock. The turnaround by Smith, and Nick Smith Rusty knocks it down. Well, that's a big bucket for Illinois. I mean, Iowa goes in with tremendous momentum with a stop there. Shot clock is off for the rest of the half. As Iowa will play for the last shot. Take a lead to the locker room against the eighth way team of the country, the fighting line on. Bruner for three. Williams in a crowd, and that will end the first half. So the Iowa Hawkeyes never trail in the first half, and at the break, they lead the Illini 35-31. We'll be right back. Alfred's got to be real happy and give credit to the guards. Leslie and Horner did a great job. Really outplayed the young freshman from Illinois. And now let's take a look at the country insurance and financial first half highlights. And speaking of Brian Cook, he really struggled in the first half. He had nine points, but for three from eight from the field. Luther Head was a big shot in the arm off the bench, played 13 minutes and had nine points. But again, we talked about Leslie. Leslie's been the key for, for Iowa. He's really played extremely well and has been slashing to the basket. And Worley's been great too. He's really taken it to Brian Cook. The big thing for the Illini to be concerned about, Williams, Brown, Harrington, that trio averages 30 points a game, four points so far. Now we talked about defense, and uh, I was one of the best in the league at playing defense, and they really shut down the perimeter. Illinois, really good perimeter shooting team, shooting 40% from three-point land, and they really struggled there in the first half. Nick Smith, who did not start the ball game, does start the second half. James Augustine on the bench with three fouls as the second half begins. Steve Alford goes back to his starters. Horner, Leslie, Reiner, Bruner, and Whirling. In deep, it is Reiner. Turns 360, can't finish, and the rebound is taken by Nick Smith. Nice job by Smith. Seven foot two, stays vertical. Had a hard time for Bruner to go up over the top. Smith averaging five points a game off the bench. Oh, oh, scores a beautiful move. Oh, oh, oh. 11 points for Brian Cook, who's had no game lower than 17 points this year. It's pretty great consistency. Oh. Reiner fouled by Smith. Now let's take a look at the first half stats brought to you by College Illinois, a 529 prepaid tuition plan. And you look at rebounds, Illinois, I mean for Iowa, their guards had 10 of the 19 rebounds and see the terrific defense by Iowa holding Illinois to only 37% shooting from the field. And those are your first half stats brought to you by College Illinois, where you can lock in the cost of tuition and fees today, protecting you against future tuition inflation. Look for Iowa to attack Smith. Smith not really didn't have the physical stamina to stay up with Reiner and some of the inside guys. Whoops. Harrington <laughs> stumbles into the lane. Reiner knocks down the free throw, his first points of the game. So Illinois has got to get their perimeter players into the flow, and that time Williams looking for Brown, and the line I turn it over. Yeah, we talked about Illinois, their keys to victory. Yeah. And we'll get to that, review that in a moment, see where we are at this stage in the game. Worley against Cook, who had a good first half playing Brian Cook. Here's Reiner trying to get inside Smith. Outside, it's Worley for three. And the rebound grabbed by Cook. Now this year, Cook has certainly asserted himself more than in previous years, and the line I am really glad that he has. The turnaround missed by Smith, blocked by Worley, saved by Horner. So nobody with a basket so far in the first 90 seconds of the second half. And Williams kicks it. 
So the Hawkeyes with a fresh 35. Let's take a look at that U.S. Cellular keys to victory again, Doug. Well, they've got to take care of the basketball, do a better job, get the ball inside to Cook. They really need to stay patient, and he's got to stay working hard for, for Iowa, on the other hand. Look to take that three point shot. It's been a real shot in the arm for them, and it also get to the free throw line. They're very successful. Every opponent this year so far, they've outshot at the free throw line. Hawkeye showing some patience. Bruner trying to get inside of Nick Smith. Steve Alford. A look of chagrin as Greg Bruner picks up the foul. Looked like one official was going to rule simply out of bounds, and then the foul whistle. So two minutes into the second half, Iowa with a four-point lead. The Illini with the basketball. Williams looking for Cook. Cook gets inside against the double team, scores, and is foul. Bruder hits the deck and picks up the foul. A lot of white jerseys go. Ball goes inside. There's three of them. Just late getting over there. Bruner was. Does a good job of helping out, but just a, just a just a half second, a half step too slow. Cook does a good job of taking it up real quickly because a lot of guys were collapsing on him. And so Cook, who needs 13 points tonight, and is almost there to pass Kenny Norman for 14th on the all-time Illini scoring list, misfiring there. Cook now right at 13 points, so he has equaled Ken Norman and actually gone a point ahead of him. Here's Leslie up the baseline, sliding over Nick Smith. I think, I think so far the, the difference for Iowa has been their quickness on the perimeter. Horner and Leslie done a great job. And you see the leading scorers right there, Leslie. And he's done everything very much under control. Eight points, four rebounds. I love the four rebounds and talked about Cook. He's got 13 points, but not shooting extremely well from the field. And guy of his ability, you know he's going to get the points. Just don't let him shoot a high percentage from field goal or from the three-point line. You mentioned Leslie with four rebounds, Horner with six. So the Hawkeyes have ten rebounds from their starting guards. And when we talk about rebounding, it's just a you know an attitude. And uh, a lot of times, great rebounding teams have great rebounding guards, and, and that's what Iowa needs right now because they're doing a good job of blocking out the guys in the paint area. And the guards are coming up, picking up the loose balls. So Iowa's first three points in the second half have come from the line, and Illinois has got the only basket in the early stages of the second half. Ryan Cook scoring that one a moment ago. Okay, defense has done a good job of disrupting the Illini offense. Brown on the miss, a scrap for the rebound, and coming up with it is Brown. Now Whirling. Horner launches the three, and Brian Cook is there to wrap up the rebound. And Cook's doing a great job of the boards tonight. His seventh rebound for the Illini. Illinois can't score off transition, and here come the Hawkeyes the other way. Well, right now, a stretch of basketball neither coach is very happy with. Well, you got to give him A for effort. You see Steve Alford very happy with how aggressive his team is coming in. Playing with a lot of confidence after that first half. See, trying to make something happen. Sometimes it happens. Got to take the good with the bad. Augustine with three fouls back into the Illini lineup. And Luther Head, who was a great spark for the Illini off the bench and led them in scoring at the half with nine, has also come in. Trying to get the ball to Augustine, but the Hawkeyes deny. Ryder with a hand on it. Really takes it away. Yeah, offensively, Illinois at times really being impatient, not throwing that extra pass, trying to force it in there. Reiner off the turnaround, too hard, line drive shot. Cook's got rebound number eight. And for yet another double-double, which would be his fourth of the year. Sondelander about to come on for Iowa. Illinois just not getting that flow on offense tonight, are they, Doug? No, they really don't. They've only got about six or seven assists. Only had six assists in the first half. They averaged about 20 a game. You saw the points in the paint. That's where the Illini struggled early. Augustine tried to get some more in the paint. and does right there. Augustine going high with the left hand to score his sixth point. And Larry, when you struggle from the field, you got to crash the boards. You got to make something happen. That's what Illinois needs to do.
Pointer being chased by Head. Luther Head, the sophomore out of Chicago, has really given the Illini a lift tonight. I love it when he gets the ball in his hands, Leslie. Good things happen when he gets to the basket. Reiner with a good look from his range. He loves to shoot from out there. He's very effective from out there. That's his first basket, and Iowa leads it by three. Yeah, but what set that up was Leslie's penetration. Everybody had to help out. And with a loose ball, he picked it up for the two. And that was Iowa's first basket in the second half, so the Hawkeyes go more than four minutes in the half before getting that rebound. Augustine and Leslie both scrapping for the ball. It's out of bounds off Leslie. It'll be a line eye ball, but first we have a timeout. 15.05 left in regulation. It's been hard fought. It's been scrappy. For Iowa, one of the surprise teams in the Big Ten. They're trying to pull a surprise over number eight Illinois right now. 40-37 the score. Let's take a look elsewhere. As top-ranked Duke and seventh-ranked Florida came up with wins. Indiana knocks off Northwestern. Big showdown on the SEC. That must have been a great ball game between two highly rated teams. Creighton polishes off Evansville and in the Big 12. Texas struggling against Baylor at the half. Roy Williams going for victory number 400 tonight in Lawrence, Kansas. And Oregon and Portland State, a non-conference game at halftime. And let's go back to the Big Ten, Doug. Take a look at those. Yeah, there you see Michigan again continues to keep winning. No surprise in the conference so far. Start off 0-6, but you wouldn't know it by now. Nope, now they are nine in a row on the plus side. Make it 10 in a row with that win tonight. From the top, the shot won't fall. The rebound is glad by Glenn Worley. Worley with his fourth rebound to go along with a six-point effort. Well, a great job by Iowa defensively. Did a great job of clearing out and uh, getting after that basketball. Good rebound. Bill Self said it today. They found a way to defend without committing too many fouls. Sondelighter in deep, draws the foul. Sondelighter moved that he probably wouldn't have made last year, but he's added confidence and strength, and that time he saw a little opening, took advantage of it. Well, Sondelighter only played seven minutes in the first half, but he had six points and was a real factor offensively. He did a great job of going to the baseline, going strong. For I mean, he's coming. He had a good first half. He's coming out here off the bench and playing some strong minutes for Steve Alford and the Hawkeyes. And for James Augustine, it's his fourth foul. So now he will leave the lineup in favor of Smith. And Williams will leave the lineup in favor of Sean Harrington. There's you see Augustine with four fouls and still 14-29 to play. Sondelighter's first miss after hitting five consecutive free throws, and Iowa leads it by four, 41 to 37. Head Cook, Smith, Brown, and Harrington on the floor for the fighting Illini. An off-ball foul is spotted on Iowa. Worley with his third foul. So Worley and Sondelighter, three fouls for the Hawkeyes. Augustine with four fouls for the Illini. Bruner now out of the Iowa lineup. Brody Boyd has come on. John Harrington averaging 10 and a half points per game. He's not scored yet tonight for the Illini. Iowa's done a great job of staying in his hip pocket. Really hasn't had too many good looks from the perimeter, especially behind the three-point line. Brian Cook wants to take Sondelino, instead shoots over it. And the rebound is taken by Worley. That was an odd shot. I think Brian Cook thought the shot clock was going down, but the crowd wanted three seconds on Smith instead. But he did force it, no question there. Indeed, Sondelino with some muscle. Brown. Rocket quick, in line to end line to score. Wow, is he fast. Well, Iowa just fell asleep. One of the few transition buckets the Illinois is able to get. But now Iowa counters with a transition basket. Yeah, Sunderlier just beat Nick Smith right down. You can see Smith really struggling right now. He's got a problem with the stamina. He's got asthma. And Bill Self looking for him to play some big minutes. Cook inside, and the foul called on Horner. Horner helping out defensively, commits the foul. Well, we talked about D. Brown's quickness. Here he takes it 
from end line to end line, and there's no Leslie gets caught, and Worley doesn't help out. You turn, never turn your back on the basketball. And D. Mountain's able to sneak up there and get that little banker. Brian Cook in double figures as he's been every game this year has now missed two consecutive free throws. Very rare for a guy hitting 84%. Yeah, but give that credit to Worley. Worley's coming out right now. He's had to make him work hard on the defensive end, and when you do that, it hurts you on the offensive end. And Cook right now, he looks tired. Cook, the Big Ten Player of the Week for that outstanding performance against Wisconsin on Saturday with 31, 24 of them in the second half, makes it a three-point game as he scores his 12th point. Good recovery by Jared Reiner. Yeah, you can see Iowa going right at Smith. Reiner there that time had the matchup. And they're, every time down, they're looking to see who he's guarding right now. Iowa's getting some outstanding play from their big man. And there's the big man scoring for the Illini. Brian Cook now with 14 points. Well, one of the few times on uh, on defense that Iowa looked confused. Signed the liner. Is he high from outside? Not this time. That was only his second three try of the year. But he knocked a couple down last year. The lob for Cook not there. Leslie gets a hand on it. The Hawkeyes come back the other way. Trying to stretch a three-point lead. Ryder scores a nice foul. Eight points for Jared Reiner all in the second half. And we get another look at Reiner just crashing the flat. Yeah, Leslie does a good job of letting the Illinois goes to a zone there. They don't have the numbers. Leslie knows that. This is the second hand break, the transition. Reiner does a good job going to the open spot. And this Hawkeye crowd is on fire. Bill Self needing to talk to his basketball team. 12.09 left to play in regulation. The Iowa Hawkeyes who knocked off a rated team here on Saturday trying to do it again tonight in Iowa City. It's Iowa 47 and 8th rank Illinois 42. Let's take a look at the well-marked Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Iowa Hawkeye highlight. Yeah, good things happen when Leslie has the ball, has a great vision right there, goes into Reiner. Reiner goes up strong. And I mean, I just love the way he, the leadership that he's given his team right now is, you know, it's hard for fans to figure that out. But inside that huddle, up, out on the court, he's a calming influence. Steve talked about it. He said, we really need him to step up, and he really has. Reiner looks for his ninth point. They've all come in this half, all eight in the half. Cook with the rebound, loses it, and it's picked up by Leslie. Now, again, we talked about those loose balls, those second hand, those second chances, and again, Iowa just a step quicker than Illinois right now. They have been quicker to the loose ball all night. Here's Leslie. Oh. Deep. Not finishing that time. Cook trying to control the rebound, but stumbles out of bounds as he does, and Iowa has the ball. There's a and there's a timeout. This is the official's timeout with 11.47 left in regulation. The Iowa Hawkeyes have not trailed in this ballgame. Five ties. Illinois has never led. And right now, it's an Iowa lead by five. We'll return in just a moment. On Saturday, Iowa Rot was knocked off 20th ranked Michigan State. Now they're trying to upset number eight, Illinois. They lead 47 42, 11 47 to play. And Larry, you talked about those ranked points. You gain confidence. You win another one. You win at Michigan State and, and Tulsa. It, 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 you, know, it, you talked about momentum and things of that nature. I mean, you could see this team playing with so much confidence out there. They're not intimidated at all by Illinois. Winner to inbound for the Hawkeyes. He teams with Leslie Boyd, Sondaliner, and Reiner. Reiner and Sondaliner between them have scored 17 points tonight. And it is out of bounds off of Iowa. Illinois with the basketball. Illini on the floor right now with Harrington along with Brown. Head. Kyle Wilson inserted at the last timeout. And of course, Brian Cook almost always on the floor. Turnovers of the ball game. Iowa once again taking care of the basketball. The Illini, who turned it over only 10 times against Wisconsin, 12 tonight. Here's Cook just inside the three point line to score, and it's a 16 point ball game for Brian Cook. And the Illini have pulled within three of Iowa. 
there you talked about it you know I was played extremely well you look up you think they're up by eight or nine and they're only up by two or five and so Illinois really hanging in there by a fingernail they really are that's the sense I get if I were not looking at the scoreboard I would think Iowa had a, an eight to ten point lead and that's not the case at all Sonda Leiter loses it big scrap for it Leslie comes up with it now more bodies hit the floor and it's saved by head Harrington finds Wilson and he has it knocked away and stolen the other way by Jeff Horner. Bad move by Harrington. You know, you're going to give that guy to a freshman on the road. Wilson probably didn't like, what? What's he passing it to me now? A great effort by both teams. I mean, if yourself and Alfred, you got to be ecstatic with the effort. Both teams offensively, they had their moments, but there you see everybody, everybody's on the floor, all the jerseys, and then you see the bad pass by Harrington. You, when the big guy's out there, you want to make sure he only takes one step, then go up, Larry. Kyle Wilson with the foul. Ryder, great pass to Leslie. Leslie doesn't finish the first time, but he's there the second time. To get information on your favorite Big Ten team, go online at www.bigten.org for all the basketball and conference news from around the Big Ten. D. Brown with his second foul. Leslie goes to the line looking for his 12th point. Well, Leslie right now, he's just going to school on Brown. Brown and Williams, the two freshmen for Illinois in the backcourt, they came in into the Big Ten playing extremely well, but they have really struggled here in the first three games, especially on the road. Ryan Cook just pulling down his 10th rebound, so he's got another double-double, 16 points, 10 boards. Ken hits the deck, and was he pushed? He was, by, I believe, Sondelider picking up the foul. The head goes upstairs. Tough shot by Brown. Maybe want to work a little bit more. And he gets called for the fouls when he reaches in. Goes up strong there. He has his arms in the wrong place at the wrong time. And well, he's played some great minutes off the bench for Iowa. I mean, he's been a big spark, especially offensively. There he goes out with his fourth foul. Last year he averaged two a game. He has nine tonight, but he sits with 10-27 left. Steve Alford thought that fouls would be very important in the team's ability to shoot them tonight. Had great move. Luther had feeling good now, and he's got oh, one point. That was a tough move, too, in traffic and just elevated over everybody. Team fouls very important. Illinois right now with six, Iowa with five. So the Hawkeyes will be in the bonus on the next Illini foul. Reiner on the miss, the rebound by Wilson. And that time, Head tried to pass it. Wasn't sure where, got caught with a walk. Well, we talked about patience, and at times Illinois shows impatience, and they've got to settle down. Ball goes up, Head's trying to make something, get it to Cook. It wasn't there. Illinois, Iowa, the reason they're you know winning this game is defensively how they get back. Illinois hasn't had hardly any transition baskets. They had to work at everything on the perimeter, and then when the ball goes down low, everything's been contested. Well, we talked about the Illini starting three freshmen and life on the road in the Big Ten, Doug. I mean, that's something else. That's a different experience. As Horner converts for the Hawkeyes and has a chance in a three-point play. Well, Horner is another guy. He's a freshman, but he takes it to the senior Harrington right there. Great move by the young guy. Goes up strong and collects himself under control. Nobody there to help. He sees, that, sees the isolation, reads the defense. And he has just played terrific. I mean, he's, you talk about all these other freshmen in the league. This is, I'm very impressed with this guy. And there's so many good ones. And again, five of them starting here tonight. And Horner, you see the line that he has compiled. And again, it turned it over just four times in each of the last four ball games. It's once in each of the last four, a total of four. And the first half had two turnovers tonight. But tonight he stepped up offensively. And the Hawkeyes enjoy a six point lead. And the crowd wants him to play some more D. Brown, good look inside. And a foul is called as the finish by Blandon Ferguson. Well, one of the few set plays have had a lot of success. They look for Cook on the perimeter. Ferguson reads that, goes back door, and he's able to finish it off. And he's a different player this year. He lost about 15 pounds, and he's added a couple steps. He's a very much a very quick player now, especially that first step. Tries to make it a three-point ball game and does. It's a three-point Iowa lead at 52 to 49. 9.29 left as Chauncey Leslie comes back in. 
replacing Horner, who leaves with three fouls. Iowa, great balance tonight. They've got all their scoring essentially from five players, and already two are in double figures, and another at eight, and another at nine. Boyd trying to get around Head, and Head makes contact. Luther Head with his second foul. And that will be number eight on the Illini. So the Hawkeyes soon to be in the double bonus. Yeah, I, no, I guess Michigan State, that really helped them a lot. Big shot in the arm. They almost uh, doubled free throws attempts and triples on, on made attempts versus Michigan State. So that, that getting to the free throw line is critical for Iowa because Iowa is not the greatest outside shooting team in the league. And Brody Boyd had really struggled at the foul line. He was 10 of 18 at one point. Made a couple in the final minute that gave Iowa the lead against Michigan State. Now he steps up and hits this one tonight. Yeah, and that's really weird because he's the best three-point shooter on the team. And sometimes free throwing is a matter of confidence and concentration. And when you get that going again, it, it, they seem so easy. It's a five-point game with nine minutes to play. Illinois' bench has outscored Iowa. You would expect that by the margin. However, you would expect it to be wider. It's only by two. Yeah, but most of those are coming from Luther Head from Illinois. Head with the ball now. Roger Powell playing tonight on his birthday. And deep goes Ferguson, loses the basketball. Picked up by Cook, taken away by Rowan. And a jump ball call. High ball call. I just realized that I think the light is out on the possession arrow, isn't it? Dick? Well, it was facing okay. Illinois. All of a sudden it went blank, so I don't know where it's I thought going. they pointed to Illinois, <laughs> but I looked up there and it's not lit either way. See? Maybe it's because the officials are discussing whose ball it is. It will be a line eye ball. So Illinois has not had a single lead in this ball game, and yet they they hang in there on a night that they're struggling. They're starting guards. Williams has not scored. Brown has scored but six. And Harrington, the other starting guard, has not scored. The travel by Ferguson, those turnovers are beginning to mount up for the Illini. And, and exactly. There's an example of being a little impatient, trying to make something happen that's not there. Ferguson, a senior, he should know better. Put that ball on the floor. And Illinois has got 16 already turnovers with already eight and a half minutes to go left in the game. And they are, for the most part, committing two less turnovers than their opponents. But well, tonight, not the problem. And, and the, the thing is that they don't play they don't play full court pressure. So 18, 16 turnovers is a lot for playing half court defense. Illinois with the rebound and Illinois with the basketball. You know, I, I've done several games already this year. I don't seen a team encourage each other as much as these guys from Iowa. I mean, something goes there, they're, they're, they're clapping, they're, they're patting each other on the back. I mean, we, we, I, we talked about chemistry. Boy, I, I haven't seen a team have this much, this good a chemistry or play this hard all year. Well, you'll notice there are no names of individuals on the back of the Iowa uniform. Steve Alford thought last year they played too much for the name on the back. He said, let's just concentrate on the name in the front. That's Iowa. And you're right, they are playing that way. Cook in deep to score for Illinois. And for Brian Cook, it's an 18-point night. And it's a three-point game once again at 54-51. Boy, getting around, head backs it in, and he's fouled. Boyd off the bench for seven points. Bland and Ferguson with the foul. Well, Boyd, you know he's going to shoot that three-point. You've got to honor it. You go over there, but you can't fly at him like Luther had. He's done that twice. In the last couple possessions, you've got to stay at home, stay on your feet, look for that drive. And then Ferguson comes over and compounds it. But Boyd really stepping up here. I mean, uh, he's a guy that uh, he can nail the three-pointer. And they know the scouting report on him trying to shut him down from the perimeter. Tries to give Iowa a six-point lead. And cannot. And Powell goes high to pull down the rebound. We mentioned his birthday tonight on the bench. Wayne McLean also celebrating a birthday tonight on this January the 15th. Cook open for three. The rebound secured by Boyd. 
We are watching Big Ten basketball in Iowa City tonight. Glad you've joined us for the eighth-ranked Illini against the Hawkeyes. Larry Morgan and Doug Altenberger with you. And it's been a ball game that has seen Iowa never trail. Game tied up five times at the break. Iowa led by four. The Illini had four chances to take a lead, could not do it. Harrington with his first basket of the game. He knocks down a three, and it's a two-point ball game. Iowa want to be very careful with the tempo. Don't don't take their time. They don't need to be impatient. Try to get the ball inside. If not, then look in the perimeter. Bruner in difficulty. They won it with his pace. You mentioned it in favored Iowa had been a bit slow, but the shot clock has rarely gone under 10. Big move by Glenn Worley. getting basket stuck, but they're getting him in the paint and getting three-point opportunity. We talked about patience. See Worley, he reads the defense. There's nobody over there to help. Does the ball fake? I mean, this guy played extremely well against Michigan State. There he sees, hey, listen, recognize who's guarding him. He says, you can't handle me down low. And again, Iowa, very successful inside the paint. Iowa 58, Illinois 54 with six and a half left to play. The eighth ranked Illini have lost only once. That at Memphis by three, 77-74. The Hawkeyes well tested in close ball games. In fact, their last four games decided by six or less. Head on the miss, Sondeliner has the rebound. Horner now runs it down for the Hawkeyes. Great feed to Boyd. about that feed from Horner to Boyd. Well, we talked about Horner. He's not a freshman. Doesn't play like one one. This is make John Elway envious here. Great pass in there. Boyd sneaks behind the defense. And boy, Boyd has just played great here in the second half. We talked about competing and scrapping. And that's what it's all about. You forget about, like you said, the names on the jerseys. And it's just about heart. And right now, I was just getting down and getting after it. Brody Boyd completes a three-point play. He has scored 10. The Iowa Hawkeyes have a 61-54 lead in their upset bid over the eighth-ranked Fighting Illini. This game is brought to you by Wellmark Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Iowa, an independent licensee of the Blue Cross and Blue Shield Association. You just can't beat the Blues. By Dodge, grab life by the horns. By College Illinois, where you can prepay tomorrow's tuition and fees at today's prices. By Fifth Third Bank, working hard to be the only bank you'll ever need. And by Balance Pro, the power of recharge. Larry Morgan and Doug Altenberger back in Iowa City where the Illini are trying to avoid an upset in Iowa City against the Hawkeyes. The Illini have won four of the last five games in this series. This is the only regular season meeting between the two. Augustine with four fouls has checked back in at the timeout for the Illini. Sondelider on the court, for, off the court right now for the Hawkeyes. Reiner's replaced him. He's also got four. And Worley pulls down the rebound. His sixth rebound. Well, that was just great defense. Blake tried to get the ball inside by Cook. Horner did a good job of helping out defensively. I mean, he's just doing it on both ends right now. Boyd for oh. three. <laughs> I don't know, that, that did everything but go down. It did. Harrington who can shoot a three very well, comes down with a rebound. Augustine Rather Harrington for three, and the rebound taken by Reiner. And Jared Reiner, four rebounds and eight points tonight. Yeah, did a nice job of playing over the top on Cook. They tried to get the ball in on ball reversal. Reiner did a good job moving his feet. Again, it's all about defense for Iowa right now. And we are inside five minutes. Reiner turns on Cook. And the foul is called on Reiner. 
Steve Alford didn't see it that way. By the way, partner, Steve Alford paid you a great compliment today. He said, the two toughest guys I played against in the Big Ten were Doug Altenberger and Gary Grant. <laughs> we take a look at Iowa's scoring balance. Now, there's terrific balance. And, and that's one of the strengths for, uh, for Iowa is that they do have great balance. So you just can't really highlight one guy. Leslie, he's a guy who could probably score 25, 30 a night. But that's not what uh, Steve Alford and those guys need. Here you see Reiner go out and play just terrific defense. The Illini needing to get some baskets to get back in this one as they trail by seven with 440 to play. Here's Brown for three. It's off the mark. And the rebound is taken inside by Worley. I was really doing a job on the boards against the Illini tonight. Leslie steps up, can't knock it down, and the rebound is grabbed by Brown, and he gets fouled. Worley calls him a foul. Worley with his fourth foul. So now, Doug, you begin to look at who's going to be left at the stretch, because Sonda Leiter and Worley, four for Iowa, Augustine, four for Illinois. Yeah, uh, D. Brown does a nice job coming back to the basket, getting that, that rebound, goes up upstairs, and uh, that was a critical possession for Illinois. They need to stop there now on the other end, and they need to convert these two free throws. Here you see the rebounding edge, but it doesn't seem like that. It seems like Iowa's got more rebounds. They seem much more active out there. Maybe it's because the energy they're showing. It is. There's certainly in the last five or six minutes you get the feeling that Iowa's dominated board play. Bruner in, Worley with four fouls. We'll check out with 4.17 to play. Free throws are going to be a big part of this ball game down the stretch. D. Brown only 56% on the season, but he gets the bounce. And that's hurt Illinois in their uh, last two couple uh, get wins against Minnesota and Wisconsin. They struggled down the stretch at the free throw line. These teams have played the same number of games. Iowa for the season has gotten to the line about 40 more times than Illinois. There's the free throw shooting tonight. Steve Alford thought that free throw shooting would really be a factor. Brown's got eight, and it's a 61-56. I will lead a five with 4-12 remaining. Hawkeyes spread the court. Shot clock is at 10. Illinois with a good defensive stand. Shot clock at seven. Bruner finds Boyd. And you're hot, you're hot, and the Hawkeyes are hot right now. They're going down, aren't they, Doug? Oh, that was a beautiful move by Boyd. I mean, he just waited to the last second and went right behind for the basket. Great slash. Uh -huh. right, challenges Horner to score. A season high 13 for Luther Head, the sophomore to Chicago Manlick. If Illinois wants to get back, I mean, try to win this game, they've got to do it down this end. So far here in the last eight, nine minutes, they've just not been able to shut down Iowa. Iowa either get to the free throw line or they get an easy, bus, uh, easy basket. You're right. The Illini definitely need some stops down the stretch to get back in it. Down by five. They've only trailed. The most they've ever trailed is by eight, and that was in the first half. So despite the fact it's not been a great night for Illinois, they've hung in there. Foul called on the Illini, sending Horner to the line. What I love about Horner is he always keeps his dribble. He never seems like he's out of control here. He's under control, takes it up there, draws the contact on Harrington. I mean, for a freshman, he, he just plays so steady out there. He never makes, I mean, it barely has made any bad uh, decisions out there. He's got 13 points, but forget all that. It's, it's the other things that this guy does he brings to the table. If he hits these free throws, he will equal a career high of 15. Reiner and Worley back into the lineup for the Hawkeyes. Boyd will leave, so will Sonda Leiter. Cody Boyd was saying the other day he loves the seven-man rotation. He says, you know you're in condition, you know you're going to play a lot, even if you make a mistake from time to time. He loves the seven-man rotation. Yeah, as a player, I did too. You don't have to look over your shoulder. do not feel like someone's going to come in for you. And uh, it's, it's, it's five, six, seven guys. I mean, you got to come together. Horner equals a career high. He's got 15 points. The Hawkeyes trying to upset the eighth-ranked Illini. Steve Alford ahead.
happy with the last call, but happy with most things tonight. A 65-58 lead over the Fighting Illini with two minutes and 54 seconds left to play. Iowa trying to knock off its third rated opponent in the last four ball games. And trying to go to 3-0 in the Big Ten. Now let's take a look at the hard-working player of the game brought to you by Fifth Third Bank. Here in the second half, Brian Cook's done a great job. 11 points and six rebounds. I mean, every point that he's got, it's come the hard way. He's really had to work hard, and Iowa's done a great job of getting fresh bodies on him. Reiner, Bruner, uh, Sunderlighter came in and did a great job, and he got in foul trouble. But uh, Steve Alford's done a nice job of mixing those guys and trying to slow him down. Hawkeyes guys well tested in the close ball games and games decided by 10 or less. They are six and two for the last games in a row have been decided by six or less. The line of course a couple of six point wins to start the conference season and that's why he's a hard working player of the game. Another double double for Brian Cook. Yeah and those 20 points even though it's a lot it really hasn't been that big of a factor for Illinois. I mean he really hasn't been able to get going. And uh, a lot of those again it, it have been a very difficult and hard working place for him to get off. Williams Brown Augustine Cook and hit on the floor for the Illini. Werner Bruner Leslie Worley and Reiner out there for Iowa. The Illini needing some patience against this tenacious Iowa defense. Cook gets inside Reiner. Reiner forces him out of bounds. Cook steps out of bounds and it's Iowa basketball with two and a half to go. Uh, great job by Reiner. I mean, he again, just stays with Cook, forces him outside. Cook really doesn't have a lot of options. See how far away he is from the paint area? He tries to go to the basket, spins to the baseline. Good defense by Reiner. And now time becomes an ally of the Hawkeyes as the Illini have been committed, or forced to commit 17 turnovers tonight. In the crowd, it's Bruner. Reiner with the tip, but the foul had been called first. And that's a difficult stat to overcome, Larry. When you have 17 turnovers, when you go to enemy country, it's going to be difficult. Again, ball goes inside. It seems like that spot right there, they must have scored, I don't know how many points here in the second half, but ball seems to go right to that spot every time. And the Illini will use a 30-second timeout with 2.13 left to play. Bruder about to go to the line, and Doug, the Hawkeyes, surprised a lot of people who thought this would be a down year at Iowa, and so far, they're trying to go to 3-0, and oh, and our game reset, take a look. Yeah, there you see the timeouts. Uh, Iowa's got th uh, three 30 seconds, but the team fouls right there. Illinois has 10. That means Iowa will be shooting uh, two for the rest of the game, and uh, that's really where they've had great success all year. They've outshot their opponents from their free throw line, but Larry, let me tell you something about Iowa. They don't re I mean, every they reload every year. They've <laughs> got great tradition. They've got a great coach, and uh, you know they started off a little slow and had some difficulties with the program, but uh, there's nobody. There's no that guy has got more class, Steve Alford, than uh, I mean, he's just a great guy. Played against him a lot, and he's a good man. The Hawkeyes have done a fine job on the line, so have the Illini, but Iowa has gotten there 12 more times. Now both teams have played extremely hard. I, I think Iowa. I don't know if they could play much better than tonight. I mean, they really have hit all on all cylinders. Talk about balance. Everybody has contributed, not just one or two guys. They've spread it out, and they just played great team defense, forcing Illinois into 17 turnovers. And Iowa has not trailed in this game. Well, Steve talked about it with you. He said that first 10 minutes is critical for them. Didn't want Illinois to get into a, a, a nice, fast, quick tempo, which they like. And it must have been. We're in Carver Hawkeye Arena, where an upset could be brewing. And Larry Morgan, along with Doug Altenberger, the Illini, ranking from the country, have never led. Iowa has forced Illinois to 17 turnovers. The Hawkeyes have an eight-point lead with 155 to go. Here's Williams for three, and that'll make it close in a hurry. Darren Williams, first points of the night. Well, that's a big three for Illinois. They feel like they get back in this game. They need some stops down at, the, at this end. Iowa doing a good job playing with poise before their home crowd with patience. They both have been there in abundance tonight. Pointer in trouble at the sideline, so he gets a timeout. He had some to burn, so Iowa will use the 30 with a minute 27 to play. Let's take a look ahead for these two teams, Doug, and for the Illini, a tough road game tonight, and another one coming up on Saturday. Well, that's why the win at Minnesota was big for them. They started out three out of four on the road, and uh, when you play in the Big Ten on the road, it's hard to win those games. 
And for the Hawkeyes, if they're able to pull off the upset tonight, they've got a week to enjoy it before they go back to Big Ten battles at Wisconsin a week from tonight. You'll see that one on ESPN Plus, as you will, the game against Ohio State in Carver Hawkeye Arena, and then a game against Purdue. So the Hawkeyes at a stretch of playing three or four at home in that one road game still a week away. And, and if you want to have success in the Big Ten, you've got to take care of business at home. And Iowa has really played extremely well with big win over Michigan State. And today, today, I, th I think tonight they played even better than they did Saturday. I would agree. The Hawkeyes seven and two on their home court this year with losses to Big 12 teams, Iowa State and Missouri. Ball pounded away from Worley, and it's off his sneaker. It'll be a line eye basketball. A minute 25 to play the down by five. Boy, that's one thing that drive coaches crazy. The first thing you got to do is don't run the play. Get the ball in bounds. Ed Cook, Williams, Brown, and Augustine on the floor for Bill Selfspy. Boyd Horner, Worley, Reiner, and Leslie are out there for Steve Alford. Cook on the miss, Horner on the rebound. For the Iowa guard, 10 rebounds tonight for Jeff Horner. A double-double by a point guard, 15 points and 10 boards. And he's played some terrific defense on top of it. He's going to be one tired guy. He's going to need a week to rest. Foul called on Williams. Oh, hold on. But Illinois down on the other end. They got the shot they wanted. They got the Brian Cook in the paint area. He wasn't able to convert it. Then Iowa does a nice job of taking some time off the clock on the other end. And Illinois has no option but to foul. I mean, this guy has just put up some huge numbers. I mean, the effort he has put up defensively. He's had to guard some quick guys, and he's played some great help defense down low, too. First double-double of his career. No doubt not the last, and with 16 points, now a new career high for Jeff Horner. The amazing thing about him, Doug, as the competition has gotten better, he has gotten better. Well, you can see his confidence come up. I mean, you start having some success against ranked opponents, and you come at home here. I mean, you want to establish that, hey, listen, you're a player. You can play in this league. And he's done that. By the way, 16 points, 10 rebounds, 5 assists as well. It's a six-point game in the final minute of regulation. Harrington with a save. Brown with a good look to head. Head can't finish. And Boyd grabs the rebound. with a six-point lead, the Illini will have to foul, but this time, Worley calls the timeout first. Worley got the timeout, so Iowa with 23 on the shot clock, 28 on the game clock, with the ball, with the possession arrow, and a six-point lead. Well, it, I mean, you talk about execution down the stretch. Iowa has perfected it. They've done a, just a terrific job. Here they do a good job of not letting the three-point shot get off. Ball goes inside. They still contest that shot. And that's the way they've played every possession so far. You know, Illinois really hasn't played that poorly. I think Iowa's played that well. I mean, they've just come out and just played perfect basketball. They needed to do that. In Iowa, I mean, Illinois has to recognize when you're ranked eighth in the, you're, you're in the top in the conference, you're ranked eighth, you, don't, you go on the road, everybody want to knock you down, and I think uh, Illinois was a little loose with the basketball, and that really hurt them. Now, Steve Alford said that this year, he said the staple of this year's team said we're not going to blow anybody out. We're going to have to grind it out. We're going to have to play strong defense. We won't run away from anybody. This game really typifies that conversation. And, and exactly. I mean, they never had a big lead. They never really, you know, you look down, and every time it seemed like Illinois was going to try to get back in this ball game, and Iowa responded. The trap comes to Horner. He got it to Boyd, and Boyd will go to the line. The Hawkeyes have been knocking down their free throws with great regularity. They've been to the line more than 30 times. Dee Brown with his third foul. So 23.7 to play as the Hawkeyes about to pin Illinois with only their second loss of the year and their first loss in the Big Ten. And Iowa will be one of three teams in the league that will remain undefeated in Big Ten play. with three players in double figures. Horner with 16. Boyd off the bench with 12. Leslie with 11. And then three other players with eight or nine respectively. Cook with 18 leading the way for the Illini and head with 13. Harrington in to try to knock down some threes in the waning moments. It's a three possession game if Boyd hits this one. 
Bauer will use the timeout with 23.7 to play. The Hawkeyes with one timeout remaining, the Illini with two. Yeah, the Steve called that timeout. He wants to make sure don't foul. Don't let's not get the three-point shot off. Let's, you know, if anything, they get, give them a layup. But then on the other end, let's burn some time off the clock and make sure you get the ball back in bounds. And I mean, uh, Iowa is just uh, just very impressed with their effort. I, I don't think I've seen a team work this hard uh, in, in many years. Uh, what they did. I mean, they. I mean, you, you look at them. You know, they got seven guys, and it's not like. You look at those guys like, I mean, look at Illinois, they got Brian Cook and some other guys, but Illinois, you know, not Iowa, uh, those, those guards tonight just played uh, just terrific. Leslie and Horner, I mean, just came up huge and really outplayed Illinois' young backcourt. Again, a three possession game for the Illini with under 24 seconds to go. Cook for three, rebound by Horner. That's his 11th rebound. 11 rebounds from the point. And the push is spotted on Ferguson. Nope, just an out of bounds off Ferguson, so it's Ellen Iowa ball with 8.8 .8 remaining. The eighth ranked Illini upset tonight in Iowa City by a team that did it with stout defense and great team play. Iowa 68, Illinois 61. Well, uh, great, a huge victory for Iowa, and it's all about defense. They shut down Illinois from the perimeter. They only shot 21% from the field, and for the season, Illinois shoots 40% from the field. Harrington, Brown, Illinois, they, they, no one got a good look. Today's final, Iowa 68, Illinois, the eighth-ranked team in the country, 61. The Hawkeyes pull off a big upset. This has been a presentation of ESPN Plus, the worldwide leader in collegiate sports television.